Welcome to another edition of the Bobby Kremen Show. Of course, with head coach Bobby Kremen, I'm Nate Ross, your host. Coach, a very momentous week as the regular season winds down here. Couldn't have done any better. It's storybook type week. Bracket Buster National TV, you win. Senior night in the Carolina First Arena, you win. And also, congratulations, win the regular season championship in the Southern Conference. And then we got to go back to Boone uh, later in the week. But just a great week. Just talk about the week in general. It really was, Nate. You know, we were involved in the championship run. Uh, we're fighting for a regular season ch uh, championship. And we had to go over to Citadel in a hostile environment and get a win there, then play the bracket buster game. And then we had to win our last home game, Sanford, to ensure before we go to Boone sure. and Cullowee uh, that we could capture a regular season championship. And we had a great night on senior night. It was a great victory and a great regular season championship for our team. Some great wins for the Cougars. We're looking at the highlights right now. Coach, Vermont and the Bracket Busters, regular season champs, the American East Conference, coming to Carolina First Arena. Nate, we're really fortunate. You know, last year we had to go um, at George Mason, and this year we were allowed to stay at home, and Vermont had to come a long way, and as you alluded to, um, they're the champs in their league. So we had two teams who are first place in their respective leagues. And, um, you know, it started out tough game, Nate. It was, all of a sudden, Nate, I looked up, and I couldn't believe what was going on. <laughs> Um, we had like a four or five point lead. We got off to a nice start. They see a nice rebounding night. Yeah, I love that kick out. You got to give Trent Wiedemann a big, big assist on that um, three by Godlock. <clears throat> now you see uh, Willis Hall inside with a beautiful uh, left hand uh, little hook shot. He's turned into a mini Noah Dahlman here for you guys. <laughs> he, he really has. I, I love that description of him. Um, they see Andrew Lawrence on a great assist pass to Willis Hall. And Nate, all of a sudden, like I said, it, it's a close game, and we go on in this, this incredible run. And there's another guy, number 30, who's really improving as a basketball player, Antoine Wiggins. Uh, we're playing good defense. We get off to a start. Look at that pass. God locked to Willis Hall. Now the place is erupting. Vermont is in trouble right now. And Nate, it was like, you know, 17-13. And I look up, and it's 39-13. Yep. <clears throat> and I'm sure, I'm sure Vermont was uh, trying to get to the locker room and just regroup. But everything was going right for the Cougars, and everything was going wrong for the Vermont Catamounts. And Nate, I've been in both positions. Sure. And I can assure you, it's a lot nicer to be sitting in, in, in the seat we were in. Uh, now we go to the second half, and the key here is to take care of business. I, I knew Vermont had a lot of heart. I, I know they're a winning team, and I knew they were going to come back. And basically, we just wanted to maintain, you know, if we, could, if we could continue to play like we are playing, wonderful, but I didn't think we could. I mean, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, but we, we do a great job. Vermont, they actually beat us the second half. Right. But um, uh, every time they kind of like threw a little scare in there, uh, Godlock and company came through with a big basket. But, you know, uh, Vermont caught us at the wrong time for them. Uh, we played almost a perfect basketball game. A very, very special night, the Carolina First Arena. Well, you know, we had to come back Monday, and we were very fortunate again. <clears throat> we played at Citadel on Thursday, Vermont home on Saturday. So Monday, you know, there was not serious travel plans, and that means that we could keep our legs. Uh, special night, Nate, a very emotional night. That young man, the families come in. <laughs> Uh, you know, people ask me, do you talk about the regular season championship? I said, not really. If, if they all know what's going on. Sure. And what this, what this game meant to us was that um, there were a couple of teams that could tie us, but we had beaten them twice. So if we could win this game, regardless of what we do on our last road trip, um, we could be declared regular season um, champions, which is a tremendous honor. And with that, Nate, comes an automatic NIT bid. Exactly. And, you know, Nate, since I've come here four years ago, uh, this has been one of our always primary goals during the season to win a regular season. This guy had a great game, Antoine Wiggins. Wait till you see the shot here. Uh, he makes before the half. He, 24 points for the game. I mean, look at this. He's going to take this to the whole wall by himself. And see, <laughs> he, he, has, he hasn't done that in a right. while. And, and it's great to see. <clears throat> but, but, Nate, um, you know, it's, you know, we... We've been trying, you know, Davidson, my first three years back in coaching, Davidson had a ridiculous team. They won the first three years. Then Wofford won last year. Look at his shot right before the half. How about Big. that? 
And a great pass by Godlock. Um, again, Nate, you know, we feel good about ourselves. Um, but Sanford is a type of team. Nate, if they start hitting threes, look out. But um, look at the rebound in there. Donovan Monroe with a beautiful follow-up. Because the thing I see is you're getting better every game. We are. But now, you know, Sanford, now watch this shot by Godlock. See, every time somebody starts making a little bit of run, uh, Godlock comes through for He's us. He's like the great reliever that comes in and stops the streak yeah, for the yes, other team. Yes, um, Because Sanford, again, you know, Sanford had some, you know, they beat Auburn at Auburn. Yep. They've had some really good conference wins. They were 10-5. and five to Jimmy Collette's a very good coach. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And, uh, of course, you have this guy, a lot of good. Look at that pass. How about that? Special. Yeah. Um, but, Nate, um, you know, last year we, we fought Wofford up until the final week. And uh, we knew we had two tough road games coming up. When you think about Appalachian State, you start with uh, Player of the Year last year, Don Sims. And he's, uh, he's like a Drew Godlock. He's incredible. First half, we didn't play our game, but we hung in there. And, um, you know, since did, did all right, but he didn't do anything real damaging. Um, we finally got loose and um, made some good plays. And it, it came around at halftime. I was actually very pleased to get into the locker room um, tied at halftime. And then, of course, the key was the second half. And um, we started out pretty good, and all of a sudden uh, we got hot. And then we were up two at the basketball. And I thought that was a key point. I thought uh, we had an opportunity right then and there to really try and extend something, and we couldn't. And then our, our worst fears came to, to light, and that, of course, was Donald Sims getting hot. And uh, they came in transition, and they made some big baskets. They're a physical team. Uh, they beat us up last year in the semifinals of the tournament. Uh, they, they're just physical around the rim. And, um, and you know, you got to also include in there Omar Carter, a uh, junior who's a very a very talented offensive player. Uh, but Sims put on a show. He had 32 points. And, you know, people are taking shots at us. And it, it's disappointing we lost, but uh, I'm, I'm so still so proud of this team. Um, we knew these two road games were going to be tough. And we also knew uh, we didn't want to put everything on the line going into these two road games. Uh, and that's why it was so important that we win at home. Uh, we did not play a great basketball game. Appalachian deserved to win. But the bottom line is uh, I'm still very, very proud of this team. Um, we got to go over to Western Carolina um, and play another game, our last game of the season. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, but, again, the bottom line is um, I'm still very proud of these guys. I hate that we weren't ourselves. I, I hate that we didn't continue to play like we've been playing. But, um, that, again, that's all part of the game. This conference is a lot better than people realize. And you've got to give Appalachian State a lot of credit. Well, Coach, now it's time for our AT&T Play of the Week with three of the main characters in the game against the Sanford Bulldogs. A great steal by Trent Wiedemann, which leads to Antoine Wiggins getting the ball and then, of course, giving it to the man, Andrew Gowlock, to finish the play. Great basketball plays, great with start with great anticipation. Look right in the middle of your picture, a great slap away and anticipation by Trent Wiedemann, kicks it up to Antoine Wiggins, who then gives it to the man of the hour, Andrew Gowlock on senior night, to finish a great play. We'll get a better look at it here. Slaps it away, Antoine attacks the basket, takes it in the middle and draws the defense, kicks it to Mr. Gowlock for the easy two. Once again, it all starts because of the anticipation of the big guy right there, Wiedemann knocks it away. Antoine Wiggins attacks. Andrew Goudlock finishes. A great steal, a great pass, a great finish. Your AT&T Play of the Week. Today was the day that I put everything in perspective. I fell asleep, but when I woke up, everything changed and the skies turned off. That was before. That was before. Came along and he played me a song with a little bit of love and a little bit of yeah, yeah. In the network, coverage is a beautiful thing. AT&T covers 97% of Americans.
Welcome back once again to the Bobby Kremen Show and Cougar Conversations. And we have with us James Carlton, or JC as he's known here. And I had the great privilege of coaching his dad at Appalachian State. But that's a whole other story, a whole other era. We'll talk about that later. But um, James, let's go back a little bit to when the season started. Obviously, you came here. You wanted to play a lot of minutes. You knew that Jeremy Simmons was ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And you knew another freshman, you and Trent Weedham, were in that same spot and probably didn't get the opportunity of the minutes you wanted. But then Jeremy Simmons gets injured, and all of a sudden, unbelievable opportunity for you. What were your thoughts when you knew Jerry, what, Jeremy wasn't going to play for a couple games here? I just thought him, like, thought process, I had to take the best of the best of it. Like, it's a bittersweet thing, but I just got to take advantage of every opportunity I'm given. Did you talk to Trent about, because obviously Trent had been playing some more minutes than you had now, it's kind of even, but did you talk to Trent and even uh, the other guys about, you know, what do I need to do? Uh, they just told me to go in there and rebound. That's basically what they wanted from me all year, just to rebound, hit the boards, give them high energy in the game. Um, just take care of the little the dirty work kind of. <laughs> no, that's good. And I know Andrew Galvock just told you to relax, have some fun, and joked around with you before the mm -hmm. games just to relax. You did, did that help? Yeah, it helped a lot. I mean, it's, he gave me a lot of guidance. He talked to me and just said, be yourself. Just do what I know best. And that's what your dad taught you and your high school coach and all that other stuff? <laughs> yes, sir. The speed of the game, a lot different than high school? Yeah, um, my high school, we ran a lot. So, I mean, the speed of other players, yeah, is different. But just keeping up, it's not really that much. I feel like right now I'm kind of out of shape since I've been not playing True. as much. We don't really condition in practice. Most of the condition takes place in the game. So I'm trying to keep up with that, I'm running harder when we run sprints and stuff. And then there's a practice gym about 100 <laughs> feet away from here that's big and it's wide open. You go in there anytime you want to work on it. I know you've been doing that as well. Mm -hmm. Is that? You got to do that kind of stuff. What, what are your expectation, expectations as the season's not over by any stretch, but it's winding down, then there's tournament time. What are your expectations for these guys that are just finishing up practice behind us here? Um, I expect us, them, them to take us a long way. We've got great leaders and we're doing really good things right now. We're ahead of the conference. And that's great. How much did your dad tell you? I know your dad didn't play for Coach Kremens because to make a long story short, his dad was recruited by all of us and Bobby Kremens at App State. And then Bobby Kremens went to Georgia Tech. Um, and his dad went to another school and then transferred back to App State. But how much did your dad talk about Coach Kremens when the, pro when the recruiting process was going on? Um, he told me a lot about him. He just, he instead in my head that Coach Kremens is a great coach. And it would be a missed opportunity not to go there. And he didn't want me to make the same mistake he did. <laughs> well, and it wasn't a mistake going to Holy Cross, which is what his dad did. <laughs> but he had a great opportunity to play for Coach Kremens. And then he came back and played for App State with Coach Cantwell and myself. Um, talking about your dad again, because I, I love to coach your dad. Your dad was a heck of a player for us. What has he taught you just about the game of basketball? Um, he just really gave me my mindset just to play hard. Um, I've never really like been an offensive type of player. I've always been like hitting the boards and get points off that. And he just taught me to just play hard and have a strong mind, thick skin. That's exactly what his dad did too. <laughs> when you weren't playing early in the season, I know your confidence had to drop a little bit because simply you wanted to be out there, but now you're out there a lot. What have you done to help your confidence to know that James Carlton can do this? I can do this out there with these guys. Um, help my confidence just just playing, just having a chance to get over the little stumps. Um, I've always I've always been the type of player. Uh, I got to get over a stump to play good, and I play off the adrenaline of uh, fixing mistakes, like blocking shots. Right. That's like what I might like to do. That's what I try to focus on, and just getting in the game, being being able to do that has helped me a lot. Help my confidence. And I know the many times I've been in practice, even when you weren't playing a lot of minutes. Every time you'd make a good play, Coach Kremens would stand up and start clapping. I mean, he's the ultimate confidence builder in everybody. Yeah, that helped a whole lot. It just every time I do something good, Coach Kremens is right there encouraging. Your freshman year, it's not over. But how fast is the first day of school to today going? It's going real fast. It's shocking. Like when I think about it, school ends in about not too long, and I just, it just feels unreal. Well, trust me, I just heard something today on the radio that said um, that Coach Krzyzewski had been at a school for 31 years at Duke, and I remember going there to coach against him. So this, your first year went fast 
30 plus is going fast for me. <laughs> James Carlton, thank you very much for being with us on yes, Cougar sir. Conversations. You're going to have a great career this year, and you're going to finish it with three more years after this, even better. We'll be back with a lot more to Bobby Kremen's show right after this. Welcome back once again, again to the Bobby Kremen Show. Now it's time to look at next week's opponents, Coach, which there was only one. And then we'll look around the NCAA brought to you by our great friends at Piggly Wiggly. We talked about going up to Boone, but then the re- back half of the road trip is go to Western Carolina with Larry Hunter and the Catamounts. Oh, always a tough place to play, Nate. Um, again, that's why, you know, winning the regular season at home was so important. Yep. Uh, the Catamounts, um, Larry Giles, Hunt, Matumbo. Matumbo. And of course, Nate, at this point, everybody's getting ready for the, the big uh, tournament. Sure. Um, you know, we won the regular season prize, the NIT, but now there's a bigger prize, a ticket to the big dance. So every team in the conference is trying to, number one, uh, go into the tournament playing well and trying to get some good seating. How tough is it? Obviously, it's a great question to ask because it's been done. You won the regular season. I didn't have to ask you what's it like. You won that. You have it one more game, obviously, at Western. And then it's come back home, get ready, and then go to Chattanooga. What kind of mental preparation to do to, to, to hit the daily double? You won the regular season and then yeah. try to win the tournament. Well, Nate, you know, when I was at Georgia Tech, usually if you win the regular season championship, there was no pressure going into the ACC Cause tournament. Because you're in. Because you're in a big dance. Right. Uh, at this level, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, most of the time, probably all of the time, you need the, the daily double. I right. like that, as you mentioned. And it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, three years ago, Davidson, um, when we upset them in the semi- semifinals, right. uh, they won the regular season. They lost to us in the semifinals. It's tough. And, of course, we all know every time it's been in Chattanooga, UTC has won it. And um, Chattanooga has a good team and their home crowd. They went out and got the bid. And so it's going to be tough. Winning the daily double is, is not easy. Uh, but we all know that the, the, you know, the, the latter part, is the most important part, and that's the big prize. So uh, we got to go in with we got to you know keep doing what we've been doing. Uh, we don't want to make any drastic changes. Right. Um, we got to believe in ourselves. Uh, we got to maintain our confidence. Uh, it's it's not easy. Uh, as a player, uh, I won a regular season and lost in an ACC championship game, but we uh, our best player was injured in the semifinals. No excuses, Nate. <laughs> um, so, um, but we're going to give it everything we have. And we're going to try and, again, you know, keep doing what we've been doing. Um, try and be ourselves. Don't be trying to be something di- different. We can't get caught up in the moment. Right. Um, the other teams have nothing to lose, Nate. They're going to come at us, and they're going to give us their best shot. Well, and way back when, a few years ago at Appalachian State, when I was your assistant, won the regular season yeah. and then won the tournament. Yeah. Coach, we talked about it when we were looking at the highlights. And I've seen this, and other people have said this to me. What do you attribute it to? You guys are getting better game. I mean, of course you want that to happen, but you're getting better every game, and yeah. the kids just have a confidence about them. Well, Nate, it's, it's real a simple. focus. It's real simple. Um, it's, you know, I've coached uh, many years, and you know, so many different things happen throughout uh, a coaching career. And Jeremy Simmons' injury has really intrigued um, me and this team. Uh, what happened? Of course, uh, Jeremy had the blood clot. And I brought the team in. I explained to them that Jeremy would not be playing anymore. There was a slim ray of hope maybe if we could keep winning, we could, he could catch us at the end. Um, but, Nate, the next day in practice, I noticed a, a different team. I noticed a team that was more focused. Interesting. And I think they just realized that, you know, uh, we just lost a major piece of our team. Um, and I told them at the time Jeremy got injured, we were in first place. Uh, we were fighting for a regular season championship, and we wanted to maintain that, and we wanted to win the championship for Jeremy. So this injury, uh, while it has really hurt us because of our, the loss of our uh, inside presence, it's motivated the other players. Um, and I, that says so much for Jeremy. We all respect Jeremy. We know how important he is to the team. And there, there's just a, a better focus uh, because of uh, the loss of Jeremy. And I attribute that to the success that we've had. You know, it's interesting. I love to watch tournament play, and you watch them all yeah. over the country. It seems like, and it's hard to, to put this in specific terms, but when it comes to tournament time, the team that's in last place, 
they really believe they can win yes. whatever tournament they're in. Yes. And, and when you're in first place, it's hard to get that point across to your kids that those other guys think they can win too. So it's just it's one at a time as you, as right. you approach it all year. <laughs> Well, you know, um, and for the other coaches, uh, they're saying, look, no matter what we did during the regular season. Right, doesn't uh, matter. We have a chance now to uh, win the biggest prize of all. And all we have to do is go out there and either win four or three games. And it's great motivation. You could have a so-so season, and you win the tournament. Your so-so season just went to a great season. Exactly. Uh, it should be very exciting. It's in Chattanooga. It's coming up pretty soon. And again, as, as far as I'm concerned and the Cougars are, uh, we want to keep doing what we've been doing and we want to keep that confidence. But Nate, it should be a very exciting SOCON tournament. Real quick, we've got to wind up this segment. Carmelo good for the Knicks, Carmelo bad uh, for the Knicks. Oh, got to be good for the New York Knicks. <laughs> and what about Steve Lavin? He's good for the St. John's in New York basketball. Unbelievable basketball in New York City. We'll be back with more to Bobby Curran show right after these messages. As we wind up this week's Bobby Kremen Show, there's only one game to talk about next week for the Cougars. Uh, they travel to Western Carolina to play Coach Larry Hunter and the Catamounts of Western Carolina, and that will end the regular season. But I promise you, next week, for the SOCON Tournament Show, we will have all the pairings, we'll have all the seedings, we'll tell you who's going to play who, we'll tell you North Division, South Division, crisscross when they play in the tournament, we'll tell you all that stuff. And most importantly, this thing is going to go in the basket for the SOCON tournament and be the most exciting time of the year for Southern Conference fans and throughout the country for NCAA fans, players, and coaches. It's tournament time beginning with the Southern Conference and then it's NCAA tournament time after that. So we'll follow all those teams, we'll follow all the teams in the Southern Conference and we hope you join us next week to do that with Coach Kremens and myself on the Bobby Kremens Show. We'll see you then.